Hello and welcome to a video on types of secondary storage. So really the main point here is to be able to contrast main memory and secondary storage to describe the different types of secondary storage, namely magnetic, optical and flash, and be able to compare and contrast them. So if you remember my last video on main memory, you'll have remembered that main memory is volatile. So that means the data in the program stored in main memory, for example RAM, is lost when there's no electricity. However, secondary storage, for example, your hard drive, your SSD, a DVD, doesn't require power in order to be able to save the contents. So even when you turn the power off on your computer, uh, the contents of your hard disk are there when you restart it. Whereas with RAM, when there's no power, you lose everything. So we use RAM just to contain all the programs, instructions that we're using right now on the computer. And we use the non-volatile secondary storage to contain the data and programs we want to use in the long term. So if you just have a look at this little diagram to illustrate this, you can see we've got the main memory in the middle. So when we start a program, when we use data, it goes from our secondary storage to our main memory, and then from main memory to CPU. Sometimes when we're finished calculating things with the CPU, we want to keep that for a long time. So then we have to keep move it from the main memory into the secondary storage. So then it can be kept for next time we use the computer. Now you might be wondering, why do we need main memory at all? And that's really because your secondary storage is just too slow. You can't feed the data from your secondary storage to your CPU. It just wouldn't work. It would take too long and the CPU would spend most of its clock cycles waiting for data and instructions. So here's a table illustrating the difference between your main memory and your secondary storage. Main memory is volatile, secondary storage is non-volatile. Main memory can be accessed directly by the CPU, your secondary storage cannot. Your memory will have a smaller capacity. Typical systems will have four to 16 gigabytes. More powerful workstations might have 32 or 64 gigabytes of RAM. But still, that pales in comparison with the capacity of secondary storage. You're looking at hundreds of gigabytes and usually terabytes on modern systems. So let's have a look at some types of storage. The three main ones we're going to study are magnetic, optical, and what is called flash or solid state. So magnetic storage is the one we're all really familiar with. This is using different patterns of magnetization to store data on the material. So the kind of hard disk drive that we all use, uh, we've got cassette tapes, magnetic tapes like this, and even the old style floppy disk drives that hopefully we don't use anymore, but are kind of were very popular uh, in the recent past. So let's look at the advantages of using magnetic storage. Basically, huge storage capacity. Hard disk drives can store many terabytes of data on a single drive, while even magnetic, tape, magnetic tapes can store over one terabyte on each tape. And that means they have a very cheap cost per gigabyte. If you need to balance capacity with cost, magnetic storage is absolutely the way to go. So if you look here, we've got a magnetic tape. And you can see the storage here, 6.25 terabytes on a single tape. Now, this was on Amazon, and it cost about 35 pounds. 35 pounds for over 6 terabytes. That's amazing. If we have a look over here, we've got our hard disk drive, Western Digital. That's a 4 terabyte drive. And that was, I think, about 80 pounds on Amazon. So 80 pounds for 4 terabytes. You can get a lot of a lot of storage for only a small amount of cost. That's why even magnetic tapes are still used by enterprise, it's still used by big business. You can back up lots and lots of data incredibly cheaply. In fact, I think Sony and IBM have recently researched a new tape system. I believe that one tape on their new system will have about 320, 330 terabytes of data on a single tape, which is amazing. It can also hold the data for a long time. Uh, magnetic storage is usually considered quite reliable. You can put the data on it and it'll still be safely there in a number of years. Disadvantages, however, 
it can be damaged by magnetic fields. If you go through airport security, or there's a powerful magnet, or in a hospital, you're going to erase that data pretty quickly. The drives are also quite heavier and larger than other storage technology. It's not as portable. Hard drives are quite large. Even the external hard drives that we can carry around with us are still larger than, say, memory sticks or other types of storage. And the main problem with hard disk drives is that they have moving parts. This means it's slower than flash technology, for example, solid state drives and memory sticks. It means the hard drives can break or wear out over time. And it means they're vulnerable to shock. So if you drop it, if you shake it, you can just break the hard disk drive. Uh, I recently had an external hard disk drive. I dropped it onto the floor. It was probably about one meter onto a nice soft carpeted surface. Didn't matter. The hard disk drive was broken. It made a grinding sound. I couldn't receive any data from it. So they're not so good for portable devices, for mobile devices. This is why we don't use them on smartphones or tablets. They're too vulnerable to shock because they have these vulnerable moving parts. Optical storage. So this is the when we use a laser beam to burn tiny pits of data onto the disk. Where we burn those little pits, it's a one. Where we don't burn the data, it's a zero. The higher the wavelength of the laser light, the more data can be stored on the disk. So you can see here we've got an original CD that can store about 700 megabytes. A DVD is 4.7 gigabytes. Blu-ray is 25 gigabytes. Of course, this is an older Blu-ray system. Modern Blu-rays, you've got four-layer, quad-layer systems where you can have 100 gigabytes on a disk, but they'll only work on more modern systems. They won't work on the older drives. So CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, anything where we're reading and writing data to the disk using a laser light. So what are the advantages of optical storage? Well, the disk is light, small, and very portable. You can carry it around with you. They're not heavy. Great. If you only need a very small amount of storage, then we can consider them really inexpensive. So if you need to use less than, say, 10 gigabytes, they're going to be quite cost effective. And of course, they're not affected by mag magnetic fields. You can take it through security at the airport, pass a magnet. It's not going to be damaged. Disadvantages, well, as you can see, they can be scratched and broken very easily. They're not robust. They're also much, much slower than magnetic storage and really a lot slower than flash memory. So if speed is important, optical storage is not the best way to go. And it's also expensive if you need to store terabytes of data. If you've got a digital archive that requires 50 terabytes of data, you're not going to store it on DVD. It's just going to get really expensive really fast. Okay, let's have a look at what we call flash or solid state storage. Both terms refer to the same thing. This is very similar to RAM. You can see you've got a chip on a circuit board, but unlike RAM, it's non-volatile. When we turn off the power, it still remembers the contents. So you've got your solid state drive over here. You've got your memory stick over here, and you've got your cards that you can use on phones and cameras. These are all examples of the same type of technology, which is flash or solid state. Why do we use them? Well, again, it's a circuit board. It's a chip. There are no moving parts. It is much, much faster than any other storage technology. There are no moving parts. It's very robust. It's very difficult to break. It's also really portable. They're difficult to damage. They're shock resistant. We can fit them in mobile devices. They're also, they make no noise. They're really quiet. They don't generate a lot of heat. They don't use a lot of power. So for any situation like that, they're really good. However, they're more expensive per gigabyte than hard disk drives. So although the cost is coming down, for the same price, you can get a lot more storage, a lot more capacity if you buy a hard disk drive than if you buy a solid state drive. You've also got the problem that flash memory has a limited number of erase write cycles. 
That means there's only so often you can write data to your drive before it's going to fail, before it's going to stop working. Now, that's not really a problem nowadays. A few years ago, it was a problem. You'd buy a solid state drive, you'd have a memory stick, and maybe after a couple of years of constantly adding data, deleting data, adding data again, it would just stop working. Modern high quality solid state drives will last a really long time. So unless you're running server farms and you're just going to be erasing data and writing it on again constantly 24 hours a day, you don't have to worry about that for personal use. But again, for big business, for enterprise, that st still might be an issue. All right, making a choice. So you need to be able to compare and contrast these devices and choose the best one for each particular task. When you're doing this, you need to think about capacity, speed, portability, durability, reliability, and cost. So I'll just go through these very briefly, each one. Capacity. How much data can be stored on the device? So if you're answering any questions in an exam, make sure you pay attention to this. Don't recommend a CD if you have a 20 terabyte digital archive you need to store. If you're only dealing with a very small amount of storage requirements, only like a couple of gigabytes, you could think about a DVD or a memory stick. 20, 30, 40 terabytes, you're looking at hard disk drives, possibly even magnetic tape, because magnetic tape is very cost effective. Speed. How quickly can the data be read from or written to the device? And if speed is really important, then you've really got to be flash or solid, solid state storage. It's the fastest medium. You can write the data, retrieve the data really quickly. Magnetic tapes, on the other hand, are not used for any situation where you require speed. They're used for long-term archiving of data because they only offer serial or sequential access. That means if you have 100 files stored on the tape and you want to get to file 100, you have to go through files 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 99 first before you can access file 100. If you're using any of the other storage, like magnetic storage, hard drives, like um, optical drives, you can go straight to the data. But with magnetic tapes, it's only serial access. Portability. Can we carry it around with us easily from one location to another? And if we need to move data around, memory sticks are good, CDs are good, DVDs are good. They're all very portable. If you've got a greater storage requirement, if you need to ha carry a lot more data, you could recommend a hard disk drive, but make sure you specify that it's external, not internal. Durability. Is it resistant to damage, knocks, scratches, being dropped? If durability is the key thing, it's flash memory. USB memory sticks, SD cards, external SSDs, they're difficult to damage, they're easy to carry around with you, they're going to be really durable because they have no moving parts. Reliability. What are the chances of the device breaking down? Is it going to store data safely for many years? Again, if that is true, then you're probably looking at hard disk drives and magnetic tapes because traditionally they're seen as a good option for storing data safely over a long time. And of course, cost. How much is the price per gigabyte of storage? So remember, magnetic storage is always going to be the cheapest option for large amounts of data. Hard drives are cheaper than SSDs and magnetic tapes are exceptionally cheap if you've got to archive data for a very long time. If you're only dealing with a very small amount of data, you could possibly talk about CDs or DVDs because one CD, one DVD, it's going to be very cheap. But then you do have a very limited storage capacity. All right, I'm really just going to stop there. I think that's enough. What I'd really like just to you to think about is what this is the difference between secondary storage and main memory. Think about what are the three different types of secondary storage and think about the different factors we have to consider when we're looking at choosing one storage device over another. So thank you very much for listening and enjoy the rest of your day.